Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. We're going to take a look at a new Battlemaster Micromaster team. We're looking at the Battle Squad of Direct Hit and Power Punch. Of course, these guys were originally from the G1 era. And were sold as a part of the Battle Squad that came out in 1990 where they were a Micromaster combiner team. Which basically meant that these two guys could be combined in their vehicle mode to form a larger vehicle, or they could be combined with any of the other Micromaster combiners to form some very odd or rather stupid looking vehicles. It was a gimmick pretty much created to compete with another toy line that was available at that time, but neither of which worked out in the long run. But at any rate, as you can see, they're reasonably about the same size as their G1 counterparts. But, thanks to the advancements in toy engineering, they're able to do much, much more. As for our G1 friends here, their articulation was pretty limited. You could rotate their arms to a certain point, and that was about it. Unless you could get it to go all the way around. You could bend them at the hip about 90 degrees, and you could bend them at the knee about 90 degrees. So you really didn't get a whole lot of movement for your toy. Plus it doesn't help they didn't make direct hits head easy to get out on the G1 toy. Power punch here, his arms, he can rotate his arms all the way, but his legs bend pretty much the same way. But he can't really bend at the knees due to the way he's designed. So let's take a look at new direct hit. And you can turn his head from side to side, since for some reason they want you to rotate his head around. You can raise his arms out about so far, and it can be rotated at the shoulder all the way. He can wind up, if we can get his arms up and out of the way. He can spread his legs apart about so far. Raise his leg about 90 degrees at the hip, and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. For his partner in crime, Power Punch. Yeah, Power Punch. Raise his arms up about so far. He can also rotate all the way around. His legs can spread apart about so far. And you can raise his legs at the hip 90 degrees and bend at the knee slightly less than 90 degrees. So all in all, they do move better than their originals. Now let's take a look at transforming these guys into their alternate modes. Now for starters here, with direct hit, they say we should rotate his head, but his head's a bit of a pain to turn with my big fingers. So the next step would be to fold his arms up at the shoulders and press them into the posts on his waist. Then we come around here and we fold up, fold out the backs of his feet like so. Then we can combine his legs together and then fold them over like so and he forms a little armored cab and of course he's got a little twin gun here on the top that's kind of nice but of course he looks a little incomplete which we will fix with his buddy Power Punch. Again, they want us to rotate his head, but with this bar in the way, 
above it. There is no chance in heck I'm going to be able to do that. So instead, we start by doing the same thing with his arms, folding them up at the shoulder and attaching them to his waist. A little bit further, there we go. And then down here at his legs, we simply fold them up and under and around the cannon. And secure them in like so. And then there you go. You have a mobile cannon emplacement. And of course you can rotate the cannon. It does have a post here so you can lock it in the horizontal position. But it can be raised upwards so it can attack aircraft. Now, of course, to combine the two of them, which is a nice thing they carried over, you have to fold this post down on direct hit, and then connect it to this hole on power punch. And then there you have it. You have their combined mode of an artillery cannon. And, of course, here is the Generation 1 version. Right next to him, you can see they look pretty well alike. Although the newer version is a little more updated. With it having the extra gun on the top. And of course the windows are angled for better deflection of enemy weaponry. Now, of course, like with the modern MicroMasters, they are meant to form a weapon. Now, are you ready to see how it becomes a weapon, folks? Well, you simply put them in this mode together, and then you turn them over. Yeah, that's it. This, uh, when he's facing like this, in a Transformer's hands, he is in, well, they are in weapon mode. And I can't even tell you what kind of weapon it is, because the instructions are in gibberish. Well, it's Cybertronian, but it might as well be gibberish. So, once again, this is probably an example of Hasbro laziness, but let's, let's bring out Refractor here, and we'll mount the twosome in here. And it kind of comes off as a giant-sized rocket launcher. Sort of similar to the old boxy-style rocket launchers that carried four rockets in it. One I'm thinking of is the model Arnold Schwarzenegger used in the movie Commando. It's the first thing that comes to mind. But right here in his hands, it doesn't look too horrendous. But I'm going to be honest with you folks, it's still stupid. There's no changing that out of it, folks. It's still stupid. But we'll get down to my thoughts. Beyond the, the stupidity of this... It is nice to see that they did bring in a different type of MicroMaster. The MicroMaster combiners came out at the very end of the Generation 1 era. So in a lot of cases, they are forgotten toys from that timeline. Some would say that's for the best. Some would say that that's not good. But that's all one's opinion of how this gimmick worked. It is nice to see, though, that they did resurrect it, and they did find a way to make it work on a modern toy. So, I do applaud them for that. The biggest complaint that I have against it is the cheapness of this weapon. The MicroMaster weapon gimmick has not really been that great 
in this line. That's one of the biggest gripes about it. And that's obviously one that Hasbro has addressed because they have shown for Earthrise, the next wave coming out in March, that this gimmick will not be continued. MicroMaster figures will still be released, but they will not combine to form a weapon. So that's one thing to look forward to out of Earthrise. Because if they're going to go making weapons like this, this is just... It's stupid. I can't say it enough. It's stupid. So, unfortunately, because of how stupid the weapon mode comes out, it unfortunately drags this toy mainly down towards the bottom tier. It falls just shy of being in the middle tier, because I did like the idea of bringing this team back into the new wave and to introduce them to a new audience but a lot of it just gets lost when you see how stupid and cheesily simple they made the big weapon anyway that concludes my review of the siege version of the battle squad i hope you all enjoyed it if you like this video drop me a thumbs up here on youtube New to the channel, please hit the subscribe button down below and join our ranks. Please ring, make sure to ring the bell so you'll know when I post new content. Also, as long as this video isn't marked for kids, please share your thoughts in the comments down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.